Book fifth, we fearless ones. Carcass to trembles, to tremble bien de advantage, si tu save orgi temen. Three hundred and forty-three. What our cheerfulness signifies. The most important of more recent events that God is dead, that the belief in the Christian God has become unworthy of belief, already begins to cast its first shadows over Europe. And to the few, at least, whose eye, whose suspecting glance is strong enough and subtle enough for this drama, some sun that seems to have set, some old, profound confidence seems to have changed into doubt, our old world must seem to them daily more darksome, distrustful, strange, and old. In the main, however, one may say that the event itself is far too great, too remote, too much beyond most people's power of apprehension, for one to suppose that so much as the report of it could have reached them, not to speak of many who already knew what had really taken place, and what must all collapse now that this belief has been undermined. Because so much was built upon it, so much rested on it, and had become one with it. For example, our entire European morality, this lengthy, uh, vast and uninterrupted process of crumbling, destruction, ruin and overthrow, which is now imminent, who has realised it sufficiently today to have to stand up as the teacher and herald of such a tremendous logic of terror as the prophet of a period of gloom and eclipse, the like of which has probably never taken place on earth before? Even we, the born riddle readers, who wait, as it were, on the mountains posted twixt today and tomorrow, and in grit by their contradiction, we, the firstlings and premature children of the coming century, into whose sight especially the shadows which must forthwith envelop Europe should already have come, how is it that even we, without genuine sympathy for this period of gloom, contemplate its advent without any personal solicitude of fear? Are we still perhaps too much under the immediate effects of the event? And are these effects, especially as regards ourselves, perhaps the reverse of what was to be expected? Not at all sad and depressing, but rather like a new and indescribable variety of light, happiness, relief, enlivenment, encouragement and dawning day. In fact, we philosophers and free spirits feel ourselves irradiated as by a new dawn by the report that the old God is dead. Our hearts overflow with gratitude, astonishment, presentiment and expectation. At last the horizon seems open once more. Granting even that it is not bright, our ships can at last put out to sea in face of every danger. Every hazard is again permitted to the discerner. The sea, our sea, again lies open before us. Perhaps never before did such an open sea exist.'